hat in Kansas. Uh, the Kansas State Wildcats, very, very exciting team last year. I would consider this this team to be one that's on the rise, uh, and that uh, that may be obvious considering they are the reigning Big Twelve champion. Uh, what are we looking like for twenty twenty three? Is it going to be a repeat? I don't know about a repeat, but I do agree with you that that Kansas State is is on the rise as. I mean, as long as they keep Chris Kleiman, um, I, I think that they're on the rise as a, a perennial, you know, above the middle of the pack Big 12 team, right? Which isn't something that you could say just two seasons ago. So as Chris Kleiman enters his fifth season with the Wildcats, he is coming off of a massively successful 2022. Kansas State is the reigning Big 12 champion, like you mentioned, Um which I I need to reiterate because I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that TCU won this game right now. I know, you know, if you're listening at home, you, you, you probably are a Wildcat fan, you know, this, um, and I just want to let you know, we hear you, right. We hear you. Okay. Uh, we watched the game too. It was incredible. It was, it was a great game, uh, overtime finish. Um, you know, right at the end of the season, just what college football is all about. It was it was really fun to watch. Um, but they, they've carried this momentum over into recruiting and ended up finishing with the 32nd overall class in 2023, which is a big jump for the Wildcats as they uh, typically hover in the 50 to 60 range. So at the end of the 2022 season, uh, Kansas State actually finished ninth overall in the NSP+. Plus. Uh, 24th on defense and 26th on offense. Um, that's pretty incredible. I mean, a top 10 power index team. Um, I mean, that just tells me that they dominated. You know, they, they really dominated the league and deserve to be the Big 12 champion. Um, and and it, they didn't have a lot of just, you know, mishaps. And, you know, they finished 10 and 4 for a reason. They got to 10 wins uh, because they were a really good football team. Um, you know, and they really did do more with less than any other team, save probably t- TCU, uh, of course, who, who you know, actually only finished one spot ahead of, of Kansas State in the SP Plus at eighth overall, and they went to the national championship. And, by the way, Kansas State was a better team at the end of the season than TCU, and they showed it in week, uh, well, week 14 in, in championship week. Yeah, so this was a very, very exciting team last year. and. Um, you know, that they won their their conference and then the person they beat in their conference championship goes on to the national championship uh, to get molly whopped by Georgia. But, uh, you know, Kansas State fans, I'm sure, feel slightly put upon. Um, at, now, Alabama did kind of put a damper on things at the end of the year in that bowl game. Uh, from that team last year that we just enjoyed watching so much, what notable departures are there and, and who's coming on board? Yeah, I mean, nobody of note really departing from the transfer portal. Um, they do take a big hit with the loss of, of stud pass rushing defensive end. I'm going to butcher his name, but Anu DK Uzuma. Uzoma. That sounds <laughs> Who, great. Yeah, that's uh, – yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, you, you swing sometimes, sometimes you miss, but shoot or shoot. So, um, this guy, this defensive end, um, he amassed eight and a half sacks in 2022. It was, a, ended up being a first round draft pick. So, um, anytime you lose a first round draft pick, you can expect a little bit of setback, you know? So, so the pass rushing is going to be, um, an area where you're, you're going to circle this year. Uh, for sure, and and they also on staying on the defensive side of the ball, they they took another big hit when cornerback uh, Julius Brents was selected in the second round. So he forced five turnovers last season and and was their lockdown corner. So you've lost a first round talent and a second round talent. Um, outside of that, they also lost safety Josh Hughes. He was taken in the sixth round and he was third on the team in tackles. So a lot of production on the defensive side of the ball that's going to be leaving this team. Um, And and this was a team that was, you know, very balanced. Like I said, at the top of the review, they were very balanced, uh, 24th on defense, 26th on offense. So they relied on on being a complementary football team. That was a big part of their strength is 
you know, the defense played well, got the ball back in the offense. The offense sustained drives, kept the defense off the field. And that's kind of what they did, you know, all game long. And, uh, you know, until, um, you know, they eventually won 10 games. Um, but yeah, and, and outside of that, I think one of my, my really one, one of my, my favorite players to watch um, in general last season was Deuce Vaughn, you know, and, and losing, losing him, um, you know, it, a small running back that was a uh, multi-purpose back who had a, a great jump cut. Um, you know, he, he went on to pl- he went on to the NFL. Uh, he, he was drafted in the seventh round, finally got drafted uh, and, you know, kind of a feel good story. He ended up going to play with his dad, um, who's a coach with the Cowboys. So, um, but yeah, so, so that's who they lost um, some notable additions and, this is so far, you know, we, we've only broken down the Big 12 so far, but in, in our breakdown so far, my favorite transfer portal addition is Treshawn Ward, uh, running back out of Florida State. This guy was the running back two in a very deep uh, running back stable for the Knowles, and he ended up with 628 yards and seven touchdowns for the Knowles last season. Um, this guy might actually be an upgrade from Deuce Vaughn. Uh, this is a serious addition and someone that I'm going to keep my eyes on all season long. I think that this was, was a heck of a get, um, you know, uh, uh, for um, Kansas City or excuse me, Kansas State and Chris Kleiman. Um, another transfer that they got in that will help on the offensive side of the ball is uh, wide receiver Keegan Johnson. Uh, he transfers from Iowa uh, and figures to play a major role as the X. Um, on top of that, as far as additions go, they also, you know, ended up, like I said, with a, a 30, with a recruiting class that ended up 32nd overall. And that was headlined by a top 10 quarterback and number one player uh, in the state of Kansas, Avery Johnson. Wow. Yeah, that that will be a, a good addition here in the next couple of years. Um, I see that uh, from, from what you're saying here that uh, it, it sounds like maybe – uh, offense is probably not gonna probably not gonna skip a beat. Uh, looks like they're missing a few playmakers on defense, and maybe just need a, a couple of guys to step up in that secondary. Uh, with losing Josh Hayes and and Julius Brantz, I see that they've got a couple of defensive secondary guys coming in to the class. Uh, not many guys coming in, like you said, in the transfer portal. Um, kind of a kind of unique to this league. Uh, uh, that's about the least amount that I've seen. Um, so on this offense, uh, what can we look for uh, as far as advancements this year and, and who's taking the reins? Well, you know, we're, we're several minutes into this review and we haven't even mentioned the main ingredient of this team. And, and that's going to be um, their leader, junior quarterback, Will Howard. Um, he leads the Wildcats on offense this season after taking over for Adrian Martinez, uh, after the first seven games in 2022, and he played pretty well in, in the seven games he played in, uh, completing about 60% of his passes and throwing at a, a 15 to four touchdown intercept interception ratio. So that's, that's not bad. And with the weapons that he has around him, and also I, I didn't mention the, the offensive line, um, the offensive line is returning five starters. Four of them are red shirt seniors, and they also have a talented junior. So, you know, you add that, you know, with Garcia and Brooks as the pass catch- catching weapons that are brought back um, with the talented wide receiver transfer that I mentioned, Keegan Johnson. And then, you know, my favorite, the guy I mentioned, Treshawn Ward, uh, coming in at running back, you know, a quarterback's best friend. Um, this guy's got all the weapons and an experienced offensive line. This this offense has a chance to be something really, really special. Um, unfortunately, the defense, as you said, as I've said, it is going to take a step back. You know, they, they do have to replace the three defensive players that were drafted uh, that I mentioned earlier. And, you know, a, a first and, and second round player is just a huge loss for this defense. Um, they weren't able to get any dynamic playmakers uh, on defense through the transfer portal. So that either means that they feel really comfortable with the guys that they do have or that this season could indicate that the Wildcats defense takes a step back. Absolutely. 
absolutely. It definitely seems to be a glaring hole there at, at cornerback and, and safety there. But, man, with this offensive line, it sounds like they're going to be road grading some, some big 12 defenses uh, in a league where I feel like defensive linemen are at a shortage and at a premium. Uh, this offensive line is going to be absolutely road grading people. So with all that being said, uh, the over-under was set at eight and a half for the Wildcats. How do you feel about that eight and a half number? Let's look at the schedule uh, and put it up on the screen for these good folks and uh, kind of go through game by game here and how you feel about these Wildcats. Yeah, so uh, once again, you know, Vegas's number is right on par with mine. Um, you know, starting with uh, Southeast Missouri State, that's going to be a W. Troy is a W. And then you got week three against Mizzou. That's I love, a very, I love this. I love this. I do too. I mean, for a week three game, uh, this is very, very interesting. And at, at this point, I know it's at Mizzou. Um, at, at this point in the review, I would lean towards Kansas State. I still have that as a push. Um, but that's that's a huge game. And, and you know, if Kansas State was getting this at home, um, you know, in Manhattan at, at, at Bill Sider Family Football Stadium, <laughs> I think I'd have to pick, um, you know, Kansas State. But I do have it as a push. I think they're the better team. Uh, I honestly do. They're going to play in an SEC environment. Um, man, circle that one for week three. It definitely, I'll definitely be tuning into that. After that, week four, they've got UCF. Not an easy game. Uh, I've got that as a push, too. But they do get them at home, so that could help them out. Um, but following a, a Missouri game where, you know, they're going to bring their A game to Mizzou, um, they got to turn right around and, and be on point to, to face uh, Gus Malzahn and, and UCF. And, and after that, they get a bye. So they get a little bit of a breather. And then they go to Oklahoma State. I've got that as a push. To Texas, Texas Tech. I've got that as a push. And I think that Kansas State is is uh, really in a great position to, to pull an upset there um, against Texas Tech. I, I think that this offense has the weapons to, to disrupt a, 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 an upwards tr trending Texas Tech team at that point in week seven. Week eight, they've got TCU at home. That's very winnable. Um, week nine, Houston at home. I've got that as a win. Baylor, uh, excuse me, um, week 10 is going to be at Texas. I've got that as a loss. Um, but if you're going to take a loss, at least it's a, it's on a road game, right? Um, and then you get Baylor at home. They should win that at Kansas. I've got that as a win. I know Kansas is trending up and had a, had a great season last year by their standards, but they're just not on Kansas state's level at this point. Um, and then Iowa state at home. Um, I've got that as a win as well. And so, you know, really I'm right on that eight and a half number, but as I'm kind of breaking this down, I mean, you know, again, the big game that, that I'm looking at is week three at Missouri. Can they win that game? If they win that game, I've definitely got them hitting nine wins, which is a fantastic year for Kansas state. Again, uh, that's, that's the total that they ended up with in the regular season last year. Um, but both of those teams should be two and zero at that point in the season. Um, you know, I, I really like this team a lot. It, it's a tough pick, but uh, with with everything that they're returning and, and the weapons they're bringing in, in in the transfer portal, give me the over. Yeah, I I could see that. I could see that. So um, they they start off with a couple wins. They're starting off two and zero. That at Missouri game. It just really attracts my eye, and I, I had to pull something up right here. And I, I think a lot of people are not going to realize this, but these teams have played each other 98 times. Wow. 98. That's a lot. Um, That's the history. Missouri actually has 60 wins. Kansas State has 33. So this has been a strong uh, Missouri uh, rivalry right here. Um and to be honest with you, I feel like I can't really remember the last time they played. Uh, that it may, I may have just, you know, slipped my mind. I've watched a lot of football over the last years, but uh, I, th that one right there, I just really look forward to. As I, Mizzou is not a great team, but I do expect them to take a, a step forward. And it, it's on the road in an SEC school. Uh, I, I suspect 
Uh, and, and Mizzou always has a decent def defensive line. I don't know what the deal is with that, but they always do. That's going to be a fight in the trenches. I cannot wait to see it. Uh, UCF, I, I think they can win that game. I think they can win that game. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The bye week, they're not, not doing them any favors with week five bye week. Uh, I don't like that before the Oklahoma State game. I feel like that's a pretty big disservice to the reigning Big 12 champion. Um, but then you go after your bye week at Oklahoma State, at Texas Tech. Uh, that just makes that at, at Texas Tech game that much harder, I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's going to be a good game. I, I really can't wait to see that. Um, uh, again, Kansas State is, is probably going to have the advantage on the line there, so uh, probably advantage Kansas State. Uh, TCU, we're, we're still kind of trying to feel them out. Uh, I, I take Kansas State over them again this year. Um, Houston win at Texas, probably not a win. I would say probably, I bet Texas has a 65% chance to win that game. Uh, but as they say, so you're saying there's a chance. There is a chance. Mm, there is absolutely a, chance. a chance. Because I'm Texas, I keep coming back to Texas. Texas, I feel like it's one of the most – I know we're doing a Big 12 review. They're on a bunch of people's schedule, but they're a very pivotal team this year. And I feel like Texas is not a team that has been in the limelight long enough to be able to withstand, say they're undefeated at that point, and then you've got Kansas State coming in there. Uh, you know, that's going to be a lot of weight on the shoulders uh, of, of those Texas Longhorns. Uh, can they handle it? I don't know. Not ready to say they're back, never saying it again, because I've said that before, and, and I've said it about Miami, and guess what? Neither one of them have been back. So uh, uh, Supposed to win the Big 12? We'll see. Baylor, I like that as a win at Kansas. Kansas has improved, but Kansas State is going to push them around like they owe them lunch money. Uh, Iowa State, uh, you know, we're going to see what about Iowa State. they got a good defense. That's probably going to be a rock fight. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, going to be two teams beat up, and they're going to lean on each other and and see who comes out standing. Uh, so, I am going to take the over on the Kansas State. Uh, I I like this setup for them. I feel like they've got the momentum. I like them. I think I like them at nine wins this year, uh, and nine very well could with the way that there's going to be parity in this league and depending on how Oklahoma does, uh, nine may be enough to, to get you where you want to go or at least be playing mean, meaningful games in week 11, 12, and 13. Yeah, I mean, it, and you, you said it. Oklahoma is going to be the – well, Texas is going to be the catalyst for the Big 12, but if Kansas State wants to get, you know, into the Big 12, they don't draw Oklahoma um, – you know, but if they want to make it to the Big 12 championship, they're going to have to outplay them, you know, without without crossing them, you know, on their schedule. And Oklahoma's sitting at a nine and a half game over and under. So Vegas likes them a little bit more on the win totals. Um, but, yeah, I mean, th there's a there's a path for Kansas State. And, and I'm just being honest, looking at the schedule, there's a possibility for them to win every single game on their schedule. I doubt it's going to happen. I'm not saying that. Uh, don't get your hopes up too high, Wildcats fans. But, but realistically, if you go game by game, there's they have a real chance to win every single game, um, and, and there's a path to that. So eight and a half games, I feel pretty comfortable. I would bet on this and, and, and pick the over, um, and we'll, we'll see what what the Wildcats are able to do this year. But. Um, Mark and I both are, are – sounds like we're really high on, can, on Kansas State, um, so you should feel pretty good about your team there in Manhattan. 